Radio.tv, bringing you the news before it happens. Stream live into your home via the worldwide internet. Welcome to Profit.tv, bringing you the latest news from the spiritual front. The following program is being streamed live from Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Program already in progress. The word was <laughs> that, um, that God was beginning to separate the people, the ones who are on the outside who are not interested in really fighting but they're playing games they're not totally sold out for God they're you know playing with the religious and and all of that that he's beginning to draw a line between them because um, his it's getting very serious and the fight is getting very difficult and only the ones who are sold out to God will receive this new power and this new wave of the spirit that he's bringing in and so when Patty had given the word she's been very concerned about it and keeps telling me about it over and over again because God has shown her some different churches some different people because he's concerned because when this wave comes if, when this wave of power comes, what's going to happen is they're going to be pushed away and they could be pulled down by it. And they can't get into the new wave, into the new power, because um, they can't hold it. And so it's only the ones that God is bringing in to them at this time that he'll be able to pour that power and that strength in. And then they'll walk in a new power that um, he's been talking about for the last few years. But um, she was speaking about it about a month before she closed. Good. So can we pray for something? Yeah. God was talking about with, um, you cannot serve two gods. When your ministry becomes a business and everything you're doing is based on making money, <clears throat> you are no longer on the cutting edge and you can't move. God will tell you to do stuff and you don't know how you're going to do it. I'm supposed to get, I'm supposed to set up some kind of a intercession core group church in Manhattan as well as maintain this territory. How do I know? That's a more expensive territory than this one. How, how, do, how do I know here? And look, at, and look what God did. He made me a landowner here. Okay? Why is God using me? Hey, there were 12 ministers in the boat. Only one of them got out and walked on the water. God will use anybody that was stupid enough to get out and walk. And you know what? I'm stupid for the Lord. I'm brain dead for the Lord because I don't need my brain to tell me it's impossible. And God will do it. It has to happen. God needs people when that will step out when he tells them to step out. It's not about what we understand. <clears throat> um, when we went to the Mandala, three of the four of us all heard... And God usually pours a certain anointing or a preparation before a battle, or you get intelligence or understanding before a battle. All I knew was, hey, we own this land. Get off of my land. And I knew to just show up and say, we are not inviting you here. You don't have right to our land. And what God put in three of our hearts was, do you know how when a young believer first gets, gets born again or baptized in the Holy Ghost, they go and pray for somebody, and that person's like blind eyes are open to their, just the most amazing miracle, you know, and you're like, oh my God, and, and, but you realize that God does that always with new believers, not religious believers, but new real believers, um, and the reason is to encourage them to go through the process that they're about to go through, which can be sometimes not men telling you you have to be crushed but this the process of the toothpaste tube when that pressure comes on because of what we're going through in life you know what if a man ever tells you he has to crush you get out from under that because that's a controlling spirit the spirit of God deals with you as he does and sometimes he'll turn around and bless you when you think you need to be crushed quit trying to play God quit sitting under people that play God it's nobody's job to be the Holy Spirit but the Holy Spirit. That's part of a control spirit that comes on people. I don't know why I said that, but anyway. Um, praise you, Father. <clears throat> 
So just like a young believer where the miracles come on because it's just totally the sovereign grace of God putting his anointing and doing it, God said, I'm not looking. See, what happens with the young believers, as you go through a process, you serve on a healing ministry, as you are tested and tested and tested, eventually once God knows that you've been built a certain way, he will give you a gift. And he might give you a gift of healing, a gift of deliverance, a gift. Of, he'll give you a gift. And those gifts and calls are without repentance. That is, I don't care what people tell you, that God's gifts and calls are without repentance, period. That's why when the prophet died, they'd throw dead people, would fall on, on his grave and come back to life. Because that gift was still in him, even though he was dead. That's why the one prophet, the talking donkey, Francis the talking donkey, and then we never get the revelation, I always say this, you know, in the church they always talk about, yeah, God could use a jackass, he could use you. You know, that's stupid revelation. Anyway, um, God, oh, okay. It's, it's, just, it's not the cleanest revelation it could be. It could be a little, I'm going to nice it up here. It could be a little nicer revelation. The revelation of that whole Francis the Talking Donkey, as I've shared before, people back then knew that prophets had been given gifts of God. The children of Israel were conquering every kingdom they came into. The evil king knew he couldn't fight them on a natural basis. He needed supernatural power. He went to a prophet that had a supernatural gift from God and tried to bribe or hire the prophet's anointing to speak against what God was doing. You've never heard that taught, that a prophet can use the gift from God against God. Hey, that's the story. I'm opening your eyes. Very simple. That's why God said, sure, you can speak a word and mess them all up. But I'll tell you what, before that word comes out of your mouth, I'll yank the chain of your life. You give me no choice. I gave you that gift. If you're going to use it against me, you give me no choice. I'll have to kill you. Oh, my God, I have sinned, the prophet says. Now, the Lord says, that I got... Now, you've heard of the fear of the Lord as the beginning of wisdom. Do you think that prophet got a little bit of wisdom in that moment? <laughs> hey, guess what? Not too much. And Paul calls the insanity of that prophet. Why? Watch what that prophet goes on to do. He's now going to turn on, on, on his creator anyway. Well, O oh king, I can't speak a word because God will yank the chain of my life before I even get the word out of my mouth. However, if you want to beat God's men, all you got to do is send your daughters to have sex with them and the demons in your daughters because you worship other gods will transfer into those men and God who's at war with the demons didn't God say that in that prophecy earlier it's about God and his adversary that's the war okay he said that earlier in the prophecy um, once those demons transfer into God's people God himself will break out against the demons in the people. That's why when you get tricked into sinning and you open yourself up to receive demons into you, you need to quickly break allegiance with those demons and repent, change your heart direction, cry out for the righteousness of God, the life of God, and the demons will leave. But when you are aligning yourself with, hey, I liked that, you will feel the wrath of God upon you because you have now joined yourself with God's enemy. God is not against people. He loves people so much he died. Why did, why did they have sacrifices? To get the demons out of people. They prayed the demons into the scapegoat. Jesus was the final sacrifice. He so loved people that were getting so demonized and he's at war with the devil who's hiding in humans because God loves the humans. That's why Jesus died. That's why our karma, I use that for this territory. The religious don't like it. That's another reason I like to use it. Okay? Their sin, their karma, their action, what they sowed, they reaped. That's why Jesus died, so that what they sowed, they reaped. Their karma, do unto others. All the bad would go on Jesus, so that God wasn't breaking out against his own people. <clears throat> um, so what happens in the process is we're given a gift or an anointing after we're tested. And different people are given different levels of giftings and anointings. But going down here, I didn't have any special gifting for that mission. And neither did anybody else. But God, three of us heard, I'm not even, all I'm looking for is that any of my kids willing to show up and say, my property, my papa owns the cattle on a thousand hills. 
and he gave it to me, and you don't have right here, get out. Well, anybody show up, whoever shows up, I'll drop the anointing on. Hey, just like when you were brand new, I'll do the work if you will care enough to walk LA Museum. If you will care enough to simply show up, it's not whether you're anointed, not do you care enough about your land to stand in the gap? Do you care enough about the United States to get involved? If you're going to sit on your butt, I'm going to let the devil have it. If you will show up, I don't care if you're anointed. If you will show up and pray, I will move, hey. says the Spirit of God. Why? Because God, like we train our kids, is trying to train us to occupy. He let the Ten Commandments mark this prophet's word. God let the Ten Commandments come off that wall. And it got the church and the religious all freaked out trying to run around and throw rallies and meetings and raise money and picket to keep. And God's like, sorry, quit putting your faith in the law. Put your faith in the Spirit. That is the Spirit of God because He's tired of the religious pushing the law and putting their faith in the law. The cults do not do it by the law. They do it by the Spirit. You will not win this battle if you do not do it by my Spirit, says the Lord. I am removing the law. Pretty funny, huh? Yeah. <laughs> let me let me sh let me share something real quick. One of the lessons, and this is why this is not about endless studies at our church meetings constantly. A lot of it has to do with letting Him teach us. The Bible says, "My children are taught by my Spirit." I would never do anything that I do based on the way I was trained, and yet there's a lot of good foundational training and learning and things but ultimately it was all designed to help me recognize his voice and then to let him continue with that God taught me uh, Jesus taught me a long time ago he said Don the devil what's your name Robin. hi Robin um, Robin the devil will use your desire to please me against you yeah so he will constantly say, you haven't done enough. You haven't pleased me yet. Now you haven't done this. You still haven't pleased me. You should have gone left. You should have gone right. Right. Now, the best way to discern that that's the devil is because it's confusion. It's not peace. It's not peace. So, and here's what people would do a long time ago. Which way is it, God? They'll hear left. So they go left, and then it was really right. What are you lying to me for? Or they hear left, and they hear right. They hear left. Make up your mind. Why are you doing this to me? Well, it's, they're attaching it to God, but they're actually having a relationship with the demon. Yeah, it's not even God. It's and it's not even God. I just want perfection. You want to hear God. So we don't hear God. I don't hear God every single second as much as I want to. Okay. Well, you can actually hear God easier when you actually hear God easier when you quit trying. <laughs> and you find that funny. <laughs> no, no. He just got he just got liberated. He just got liberated. <laughs> you actually find God when you quit trying because he's already right there but we're raised up under such a stinking stupid religious spirit that we think we have to have this Christianese language and these Christianese gestures and these Christianese things and we totally miss that wonderful place and relationship with him Come on, I'm going through my stuff today feeling all beat up, feeling this and that and, God, and right in the middle of it God says I'm going to use you tonight and I'm like, whoa. And then when he started coming through, and I'm like, why is this coming out? And I tried to mellow back, but it did that. And then he said, why? Because he had to break something that was trying to stop what he wanted to do. As soon as you get that it has nothing to do with you, all God's looking for is a vessel that he can flow through untainted by a religious filter. And so often a lot of the prophecies we're hearing today are from a religious filter because it's from a religious spirit and that's why it always has that same thing and even when I was saying some of the same scripture things I started to pull back because it almost starts to sound you know what I'm saying like where you're just prophesying and you quote and all this and it's and all of a sudden it's like whoa whoa whoa, whoa. because God can talk regular normal language he can and I got news for you if you're trying to infiltrate into the middle of the world they're not going to buy this stuff it'll freak them out 
Does that make sense? And so some, sometimes, and I'm not picking on that, I'm just saying sometimes God will just be very, very normal. Oh, but, yeah. But you gotta know, be, or you... Uh, you got it. So, and we got it. It says it's the spirits of the prophet are subject to the prophet. And, and so I've seen uh, different people, you know, blow people out because we get so caught up in our little church world, you know what I'm saying, to where we're doing all these things and then it gets next to real people or we think we have to do all these things before we pray. You know what I'm saying? We got all these formulas. We have studied. We went to class. We got our, our brownie points for all the different, you know, institutes, you know. And the problem is just like a husband or a wife, Sometimes you just talk to your person. Yeah. And sometimes you just talk to your person. You know, you shouldn't have left his courts. <laughs> you should be in his courts the whole time. And I just, I thank him all the time. I'm in his courts. I don't have to try to get into his courts, so I enter with thanksgiving in my heart. You know, da, da, da. that's all good. <laughs> that, that's all good. That's all good when we're way outside the court in the flesh. But we should, at this point, we should already be kind of walking in his presence, moment by moment, dialogue, talking to him, hanging out, what's up? You know, ooh, that, that was pretty stupid. What did he do? Hey, I love you. Aww. You do? Oh, you know, and yet I'm sitting here beating myself up. That's what I want to do here. He loves us even if we blow it from time to time. All the time. And we go back into that seat in the hand. All the time. It's that easy. But see, we can get out of where we need to be, and usually it's when it, usually it's when we are not in where we need to be, and so we get out. We're running around. We're trying to please him. Then we're totally missing it. How many times is the blessing right, and the devil gets us to go left? So we weren't where God needed I hate us to be. That part about life. It's not about life. It's usually about our own flesh. I started learning how my flesh worked, and the very person God wanted me... You know how I can tell who God wants me to minister to? Because I walk in a room and I go, hi, hi. Oh, I do not want to talk to that person. <laughs> and then it's like, hi, hi. And that's the person where the blessing... Or that's the person that gets healed. Or that's the one that has the word from God. Sure, because your flesh, because the enemy has access to your flesh. I got news for you. The devil has access to your flesh. And your flesh and your intellect... So you learn to kind of watch. Do you realize that God tricks us all the time? He has to because he's dealing with stubborn flesh. So he has to make you think it's your idea. So he puts something on your heart, but it's really him that wants to do it. Now you're begging God, let me do this, let me do God's like, <laughs> you know, once you figure it out, it's on, why is it on your heart and not her heart? Because that's what he wants you to do. But you thought it was your idea. Therefore, you were willing to do it. But if God said, this is my idea, you go, No. <laughs> I'm telling you, God uses men, uses women. How do, you think, how do you think God gets us where he wants us to go? You know, he's put girls in front of my path. You know, oh, I got to find a wife, puts a girl, man, I'm chasing that thing down. And I used to wonder, what is going on? And it didn't, and it's like, I needed you to go this path in this season. And, the, and it wasn't to be your wife, but that's what you were after. So that's the bait that worked for you. Wow. And yet God, God has to deal... No. no, because God has to get us where we want. And the other thing is, too, I learned this about that whole thing, too. You know, you're not supposed to go say, I'm not your mate. Get away from me. You know, you're not supposed to do that either because, because, no, no, beca listen to me. Because um, hope, the, the, the energy that's generated between men and women is what makes life work. Uh, you get a bunch of sodomites together and you will see, like I just saw recently on the beach here, and you will see a spirit of death. Mm -hmm. There's no life on it. And so Last there's way. always hope and that builds and we keep trying and we keep fighting. And I've dealt with this. I've come out and said, how come that never da 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 da? And God just showed me, you wouldn't have been happy with that, but where you were in your life, I needed that to inspire you to go to the next levels in your own life so that you could ultimately get where I wanted you to get so that I could then connect you with your wife. Because if I connected you below, you would have this destiny and you weren't prepared, but yet you were at the point of giving up so, or just quitting or compromising with anything. And so I had to put a goal, I had to allow you to have a goal which gave you energy to get you through a point but in the right point when the things then you move on i'm just telling you, you just take that of course <laughs> that was good. how do we all get it anyway <laughs> okay so god i learned this about god a long time ago and i had to start saying god i'm so i hate my flesh being stinky why can't i just do what you want so i saw myself doing that with the, this gentleman's shoes so 
I did that. You know what I'm saying? Or a lot of times I'll just look. I went and ate lunch today. Where did I eat? I went and ate at a place, and I had left the place and didn't want to go there. But then um, God had shown me, and so he didn't have to. See, a lot of times it's like, you need bobby pins. What? I guess I have to go to the drugstore to get bobby pins. Ah, I don't need bobby pins today. Yes, you need more bobby <laughs> pins. And these thoughts keep hitting you, and you're like, and not only that, you need a compact. And a, I got five here. I, I, I got to go shopping today. I don't know what's up. And you go to the drugstore, and this divine appointment happens. You forget your bobby pins and stuff. But that's what it took for God to get you there. And at one point, I just said, God, you know, wh whether it's a guy, a girl, or whatever it takes, he's dealing with our stubborn flesh because we don't know how to just be obedient. Uh, we want to be obedient, but we're so busy trying to find the religious God how come you're not talking to me? How come you? And God's like, who are you talking to? I'm talking to you all day long. You know, no, 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 that's me. No, you, no. You know, it's like sometimes God sticks so close, but yet people are trying to hear from the spirit of religion because they think the spirit of, God says they think the spirit of religion is me and it's not me. It's a counterfeit spirit. God sticks closer than a brother. And I'm telling you, when you start finding that out, you get very liberated. You hear better from God than you think you do. God talks to everybody all the time, whether they recognize it or not, or whether they're filled with a lot of demons that won't let them hear it, or the confusion, or the radio, or the other voices, or the nagging spouse, or whatever it is that brings confusion. God talks all the time. How did all those great movies get made? None of those people knew God. <laughs> Hello? God can t does it. It's, he doesn't just use it. He hardly uses the church. I'm sorry. Because they get so religious. They won't let him. You know, when's the last time he told a bunch of church people not to have a job? My Bible tells them all to get jobs. No, I got to not, you know, what are you talking about? You know, Abraham was a land, you know, owned a lot of, a lot of property. You know, come on. That's the spirit of religion. And you go to these meetings, and God says, says a thing, and you hear everybody prophesy by the spirit of religion, and so you're in and you're out. And it's like, that's the spirit of religion. And it's control. Why do you think the body of Christ isn't walking in the prosperity of the Bible? Maybe they're listening to the wrong God because God wants to give generously to his kids. And that doesn't mean go chase the spirit of, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying, that we're, that we're just out to get everything we can get but I'm saying we've been sitting under a religious spirit for a long time thinking it's God and that's why people have so much confusion because God's not in that spirit and that's why the confusion go left go right because we're okay I'm done <laughs> no 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 I'm done you know, you know, I've noticed that um, I guess in, in I guess my conclusion from now from where I've been about in my walk with God that I believe that the church has been so you know, narrow-minded in the sense that the church, the church is um, a victim of being stereotyped and being shunned away from, and, and because of the, the, the jargons and 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 uh, and uh, and it's it's the I think the church victimized themselves, not knowing, being you know, ignorant of it. You know, Jesus taught a principle of being wise as serpents, and you know, you look at the serpent side. Okay, they're what they're uh, kind of you know slick and trying to be. You know, very intelligent, but we gotta be portrayed as them, but not. But then again, you know, Jesus says, "Be harmless as lambs." You know, so there's a principle behind it, I believe, where we can't just throw off being naive and gullible, because that's how we're stereotyped a lot. Because oh, you're a Christian, all of a sudden they hear the word Christian, it's an instant stereotype. You know, I I I get that all the time, because they think we're we're not that intelligent. We're just so narrow-minded. And our focus is minimum, and it's just, you know, I mean, uh, uh, the Bible's good and all and everything, but Jesus wasn't always about, you know, scrolls or anything. He was about our daily living. He, he was he was about relating with people through parables, what they did every day, is farming and fishing and stuff like that. So talk the language of the people you yeah. want to talk to, right? And you know, um, the Bible says a wise man wins souls. A religious spirit says, like the Jehovah's Witness. Wait till Sunday morning when they're good and hungover. And they're, and they're already feeling, oh, man, what did I do to myself? What an, oh, I feel ugly. Oh, my God, I need to go to church. Knock, 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 knock. Hi, you wicked person. You need to come to church. And, they, and the spirit of condemnation that's on that group captures those when they're under condemnation. I'm just saying, that is not what a wise man wins souls doesn't mean 
door-to-door -door Jehovah Witnessing. David said, a wise man wins souls. What was the context? God, my enemies are all around me. Who will deliver me? And then God delivers him. David started realizing that he who's for him could not easily turn against him. And it even says, uh, uh, go make friends with unrighteous mammon so that when you fail, they'll receive you. What's all this talking about? Jesus said the same thing. Lord, Jesus, them, guys, them critters over there is doing Jesus a different way than we are. Jesus said, he who's for me cannot easily turn against me. And in other words, a wise man wins souls. Sometimes it's good to just go in and build some relationships and get people to like you. And just to hang out and do a good job. Let them, let them put you into a place. I don't tell people I'm a, a Christian because to start with, if you look at Christian, if you have like a big circle and you've got Christian, man, that entitles a lot of strange stuff. Then you have another circle, how many people that have a relationship with Jesus and actually hear from God and do it. You've got a whole other circle, which part, it's a smaller circle, and part of that circle dissects the Christian circle but it also goes into people and prophets that haven't been received in, that, that are totally outside the circle. It goes into people that God uses like you too. Hey, and some of the songs that they sing. Hey, it goes into the stuff that's happening with Mel Gibson. It goes, hey, guess what? The Spirit of God is actually talking to people. So I'm not interested in this little group that pickets and condemns. And you know what I'm saying? Because within this, there's just a lot within it. So rather than trying to build relation, why don't you go stand on your own merit? Hi, I'm Denny. <laughs> I play guitar. Hey, you play good. I like it. Oh, when you sing, I just touch. Great. I meet people, and I, the last thing I want to let them know is anything about Christian or Jesus. Isn't that really a weird reverse? We were always taught to Jesus jam people. Hey, Jesus. <laughs> hey, Jesus. Hey, Jesus. I told them sinners what's going on. They would get straight with God. And then we are taught to Jesus jam. No. Why don't you build relationship? Why don't you build relationship? You know, we're going to project with them. You've been watching Profit.TV. Please join us next time as we continue to bring you cutting-edge spiritual technology. If you want to have your spiritual weapons sharpened, be sure to tune in to the next episode of Profit.TV. If you'd like more information, call 818-994-4006. Eight one eight nine nine four four zero zero seven. You've been listening to Profit.tv. You can join us live right now on the World Wide Web at Profit.tv. Again, www.profit.tv is where we sharpen your spiritual weapons using the latest in spiritual technology. This is Seamus from Dublin, and you've been listening to Profit.tv. Please join us next time as we continue to bring you the latest in cutting-edge spiritual technology.